Hello everyone, welcome back to the Film Insight channel. In today's video, we're going to discuss some bar rescue bars that shut down regardless of Taffer's assistance. So sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get straight into the content guys. We're starting things off with Angel Sports Bar. It looks like a strip club on the outside, and it looks like a strip club on the inside, and the staff working in it? Strippers. The first bar to be featured on Bar Rescue was Angel Sports Bar in Corona, California. Renee Vicari put her life savings into the biker club in 1992. The bar was making close to $100,000 per month at its peak. Vicari did everything in her power to get the customers back once things started to decline. With $4,000 in losses every month and mounting debts, Vicari finally reached out to Taffer for some aid. The 2,500 square foot bar included an elevated stage with dartboards and was downright filthy. After entering the bar for some recon, Taffer's wife Nicole orders a martini that was way too strong. Upon further inspection, Nicole points out that the bar had low class gentlemen's club vibes. Taffer later enters with mixologist Michael Tips, hoping to bring the bar back on its feet. He also invites Deborah McGuire, a nightclub specialist, to pitch some ideas as well. With lousy managers and an even lousier decor, Taffer points out to Vicari that the stage, which takes up 20% of the floor, is doing nothing but harm the business even further. Later on, during the renovations, the useless stage was removed and the bright neon signs were dismantled. With the much needed facelift, the bar also got itself a new name, being Rax Billiards and Bourbon. The new pub was an instant hit with the customers and the ladies took a special liking to it as well. It went on to operate successfully for a number of years until the bar ran into a few issues. At around 11pm on August 10th, 2015, there was a deadly stabbing outside the bar. Although this had nothing to do with the staff or the owners, it did bring business down significantly. A year later, the bar was renamed to Bar 1650 by the owners. But that just wasn't enough to save it from being shut down altogether in 2018. A while later, the original building suffered from a massive fire that caused thousands in damages. According to an anonymous tip-off, the bar was set ablaze on purpose. Several firefighters were reported to have suffered severe injuries, which is awful. Today, Angel's Bar is no more than dust in the wind. The burnt ruins still stand at the location, with no new buyers or tenants coming forward to restore the place. Up next is Headhunters. Are filled with bugs. The staff told me that they see cockroaches every day here, and they're no, for a day. Cockroaches in bottles. Let's go ask them. A pub in Austin, Texas called Headhunters was featured in the third season of the show. Steve Ritchie, the owner of Headhunters, worked as an engineer before opening this very peculiar bar. The pub was making close to $70,000 a month when it first started and stood out due to its unique concept. However, the bar's fortunes began to decline, which is why Ritchie reached out to Taffer for some help. Along with his wife Nicole, Chef Joe Brooke, and service specialist Jesse Barnes, Taffer inspected the place. He learned that the club featured fetish-themed shows, which was pretty weird. To make matters even worse, once you're actually inside, all of your senses are put through the ringer. While the rancid smell that spread across the bar was anything but pleasing, the scantily clad sleazy dancers only made things worse. What is the smell? It smells like cat piss in here! The punk band was strumming away at an extremely high decibel level, as well as simulating a miscarriage on stage. Now who would want to see or hear something like that? When Taffer inquired about the unpleasant odor, he was bluntly told that it was cat piss. Yeah, pretty much everything about this place was disastrous. Just when you thought things were bad, they get way worse. Nicole spots a roach as the bartender starts to pour her drink. The bartender does his very best to hide it, but Nicole has a very keen eye. When confronted about this, Richie takes offense and claims that other bars have bugs too. The following day, Taffer shows the staff a video of the bugs scurrying away from the exterminators, revealing that things were far worse than they had imagined. With so little revenue being made, the only compensation that Richie provided his employees was in the form of tips. While Richie attempted to claim that he gave his staff a wage, they quickly disputed this. Seeing the sad state of affairs, Taffer pledged to assist the bar for the sake of the staff and not for Richie. If they did choose to leave, Taffer assured them that he would help them find another job. If you're willing to stay, I'm willing to stay. If you guys are going to leave because you don't want to be treated this way anymore, then I'm prepared to call other bars on this street and help you find jobs. During the stress test, Richie was nowhere to be found. Despite this, Taffer decided to train the staff on how to make new cocktails that would attract a younger clientele. 
After 36 hours of renovations, the bar was relaunched under the name Metal and Lace. The pub was given a brand new exterior and improved uniforms to fit with the decor. The dancers, who were finally dressed more appropriately, put up a better show on the new stage. Additionally, thanks to the new steampunk theme, the bar was far more warm and inviting. Instead of assisting the workers as he should, Richie was seen chatting up the customers. Richie was heavily criticized for his careless and irresponsible behavior, which was quite satisfying to say the very least. Six weeks later, Jewel and Chloe were named the managers. Post-bar rescue, customers appeared to be pleased with the new adjustments, but Richie unfortunately reverted back to his old ways months later. At the end of April in 2014, Metal and Lace closed down for good. This was mostly due to the fact that Richie didn't pay the staff and his lease agreement was terminated. He's expressed his desire to reopen the bar elsewhere, but nothing has really been confirmed yet. God, we hope he doesn't. Next up is Artful Dodger. They should know. I'm just saying that I'm not used to you. So they're not the more you speak, the more of a fool you look like. The Huntington, New York speakeasy bar Artful Dodger was featured in season 4 of Bar Rescue. Mike Conforti, the owner of the pub, made $50,000 a month for the first few years. But things took a turn for the worse when he asked for the help of a club promoter named Brian Gordon in 2011. Gordon never made any improvements and only helped the business with losing money. Conforti and Gordon would often argue about who was responsible for the Artful Dodgers collapse. The bar's exterior had the appearance of an auto garage and dead flies were found inside most of the liquor bottles. How nasty. Phil Wills, a skilled bartender, and Jesse Barnes, a skilled server, were brought in by Taffer to fix the place up. While Wills showed the staff how to make beverages efficiently, Barnes put the staff's multitasking skills to the test. Later on during the stress test, the bartenders forget all that Wills taught them and continued being incompetent. In the midst of all this, a significant legal problem arose. Several underage customers sneaked in and purchased beverages despite the presence of security personnel. Following the disastrous stress test, Taffer and the specialists meet to brainstorm a fresh concept for the bar. Taffer comes up with the novel concept of utilizing the speakeasy atmosphere and the bar's appearance as an auto garage to their advantage. For those of you who aren't in the know, speakeasy is a former unlawful institution that gained popularity during the prohibition of alcohol in the 1920s. To add to the new theme, Wills made two signature drinks called the Boutician and P's and Q's Ginger. On the other hand, Barnes worked to polish the staff's overall skills. The bar was renamed to P's and Q's Auto Body following the renovations and the relaunch was a roaring success. Several patrons adored the innovative and fresh ambiance while the new cocktails on the menu received high praise. A month later, the sales improved significantly, rising by 30%. From the music to the dancing, everything was in full swing. Unfortunately, the bar would soon experience something very tragic. It sustained substantial damage when the store next door caught fire in March of 2015. Due to the bar's disabled Facebook page, many patrons assumed that the bar would close down for good. But in May of 2016, the establishment was reopened and it was up and running till October of 2018, though it closed down the same year. One of the bartenders named Michael Matarazzo changed the concept and renamed it to Repeal 18, which seems to have average reviews. And finally, we have Lickety Split. Ugh, look at this! This is disgusting! I'm gonna throw up. Can anybody eat this? Lickety Split was featured in the fourth season of Bar Rescue. The owner is Tom Gaylord, a former investigator. What an interesting last name. Anyway, the bar gained popularity once it launched in 2003. To deal with the trauma of his past occupation, Gaylord started to drink heavily. This is when the bar's finances began to deteriorate. Coco, the bartender, claims that Gaylord's drinking gets him into problems. Taffer enlists the assistance of bartending specialists Phil Wills and chef Frank Pinello to help him with the rescue. Acting as Taffer's spies, Frank Pinello and a local woman named Dorothy Will enter the bar. The owner's daughter Laura joins him in the SUV to talk about her dad. She informs Taffer that they barely have enough money to keep the bar open since they have a high amount of debt. Taffer was shocked to find out that the menu featured a drink called Pink Vagina. After the spies ordered a pizza, they found that it was overstuffed and loaded with grease. Through some more discussion, Taffer finds out that Gaylord has a bad reputation when it comes to the way he treats women. He was even heard calling one of the bartenders white trash. At this point, Taffer had had enough and decided to barge into the bar to confront the owner. Taffer ends up striking a deal with Gaylord. He promises to help restore the bar if Gaylord gives up on his incessant drinking. From a malfunctioning fridge to a confusing ticketing system, Lickety Split had everything wrong with it. As a part of the remodeling, Taffer gave the bar two separate names. He called the first floor alleged bar and pizza and the top one second state lounge. 
He thought it would be a good idea to divide the building into a pizza restaurant on the ground floor and a lounge on the second. A much needed POS system and a new drought beer system was installed as a part of the renovation. The relaunch was a booming success and Gaylord lived up to his promise of remaining sober on the job. Post Bar Rescue, Gaylord kept a few of the improvements but got rid of most. In 2015, Lickety Split aka Second State Lounge closed down barely a year after the episode aired. With that, we've sadly come to the end of the video. Do you think there are any bars that were far worse than these? Let us know in the comments section down below. Don't forget to give us a like and share. Also hit the subscribe button to never miss out on our updates. Thanks for watching guys!